Good morning. It's September 18th, and this is your Daily Brief in Science. Here's everything you need to know. SpaceX's Polaris Dawn mission has successfully returned to Earth, marking a significant milestone in commercial space exploration. The mission concluded on September 15, 2024, after a five-day journey that featured a historic achievement, the southernmost splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico by a crewed spacecraft. One of the standout elements of the Polaris Dawn mission was the first-ever commercial spacewalk. Crew member Jared Isaacman, along with SpaceX engineers Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon, conducted this spacewalk, making them the first non-government astronauts to perform extravehicular activity in the vacuum of space. The spacewalk lasted less than two hours, a notably brief duration compared to typical missions, due to the need for depressurization, with the capsule's hatch open for only half an hour. Throughout the mission, advancements in space travel and astronaut capabilities were prominently showcased. This included the use of new, less bulky spacesuits designed for future Mars missions. The spacewalk also served as a preliminary test for spacesuit technology that may be crucial for NASA's upcoming Artemis missions to the Moon. On their final day in space, the crew utilized Starlink technology to video chat with friends and family, adding a personal touch to their journey. The Polaris Dawn mission contributed to a record number of people in space, with 19 humans in orbit simultaneously during this period. ESEC Man who is heavily invested in these missions, is already planning future missions that aim to be the first crewed flight of SpaceX's Starship. The crew's return to Earth included intense moments, as highlighted by retired Air Force pilot Potit, emphasizing the challenges faced during re-entry. SpaceX continues to focus on the importance of reusability in its missions, which is a key factor in making life multiplanetary. Spanish astronomers have announced that Earth will soon have a temporary second moon, an almost invisible asteroid named 2024 PT5. Unlike previous instances, researchers confirm that 2024 PT5 is a natural object, possibly a piece of ejecta from a lunar impact. The asteroid is set to enter Earth's orbit on September 29, 2024, and will remain for approximately two months, exiting on November 25, 2024. During its approach, 2024 PT5 will come within 2 million miles of Earth, traveling at a speed of approximately 35,000 miles per hour. Due to its distance, the asteroid is unlikely to be visible to the naked eye, but NASA provides a virtual asteroid tracker for real-time monitoring. Smaller asteroids like 2024 PT5 are harder to detect and predict because of their faintness and gravitational interactions with other celestial bodies. After its appearance in 2024, 2024 PT5 is expected to return on January 9, 2025, but will remain invisible, with the next visit not anticipated until 2055. This phenomenon highlights ongoing interest in near-Earth objects and their potential impact on our planet. Astronomers from ESA's Near-Earth Object Coordination Center tracked the asteroid and refined its trajectory and impact predictions. In 2023, NASA allocated $90 million for near-Earth object detection efforts, with projects like the Sutter Ultra and NASA's NEO Surveyor Infrared Telescope under development. Modern telescopes can detect smaller asteroids, which can still pose local hazards upon disintegration during atmospheric entry. Historically, asteroid impacts have shaped celestial bodies and influenced the formation of life on Earth, but they can also lead to mass extinctions, as seen with the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. A recent study has revealed how a small population of humans, arriving in Cyprus around 14,000 years ago, significantly impacted the island's unique megafauna. This arrival coincided with the rapid extinction of the dwarf hippo and dwarf elephant species, which occurred within just a century of human settlement. The dwarf hippo, known as Phanurios minor, and the dwarf elephant, Paleoloxodon cypriots, were likely driven to extinction due to hunting pressures from these early humans. Lead author Professor Corey Bradshaw noted that these mammals were particularly vulnerable as they were targeted for their edible meat, which made them an attractive resource for the hunter-gatherers. Bradshaw emphasized that the amount of meat these megafauna provided was critical in assessing their extinction risk. The findings underscore the notion that even small human populations can dramatically disrupt native ecosystems and lead to major extinctions. 
To reach these conclusions, researchers reviewed archaeological records and utilized mathematical models to analyze the dietary habits and hunting practices of these early inhabitants. This study, part of the University of Cyprus initiative Migrate, challenges previous beliefs that small human populations could not cause such rapid extinctions. Dr. Theodora Muchu highlighted that Cyprus's insular environment makes it an ideal location for studying the impacts of early human populations on megafauna. The study's results align with existing paleontological data on megafauna extinctions, reinforcing the role of early human populations in these significant events. The research findings were published on September 17th in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B Biological Sciences. Hyundai Bioscience USA is partnering with the University of California San Diego to tackle the challenges posed by long COVID. This collaboration, formalized through a Memorandum of Understanding on September 18, 2024, aims to conduct an investigator-initiated trial assessing the antiviral drug Zafti, which is derived from niclosamide. Zafti is designed to alleviate symptoms associated with long COVID by employing multiple therapeutic mechanisms, including inflammation inhibition and neuroprotection. Professor Davy Smith, who directs the UCSD Altman Clinical and Translational Research Institute, emphasized the importance of this partnership, noting the lack of effective therapies for long COVID, a condition affecting millions globally. Current treatments for long COVID are limited, often targeting a single mechanism, which has hindered the development of effective therapies for this multifaceted condition. Patients typically experience a range of complex symptoms such as chronic fatigue, inflammation, and cognitive decline, which existing treatments do not adequately address. The clinical trial will be led by UCSD professor Ajay Bharti, an infectious disease specialist with a focus on the neurocognitive effects of viral illnesses. Dr. Bharti's expertise makes him a suitable leader for this trial, which seeks to explore innovative treatment options for long COVID. Hyundai Bioscience, established in 2000 and listed on COSTAC, is committed to drug development through innovative delivery systems and repurposing existing drugs, showcasing its dedication to addressing critical health issues. Scientists are sounding the alarm on the need for a global oversight system to address the risks posed by rapidly advancing artificial intelligence technologies. In an open letter signed by over 30 experts, including Turing Award winners, they express concerns about the potential loss of human control over AI systems, which could have catastrophic consequences for humanity. The letter emphasizes the critical importance of maintaining human oversight to prevent misuse or malicious actions associated with AI. While acknowledging some existing international cooperation on AI risks, the scientists are calling for increased collaboration and the establishment of ethical standards in AI development. They highlight the urgent need to create an international governance regime to prevent the emergence of AI models that could lead to global catastrophic risks. The proposed framework includes three key processes emergency preparedness agreements, a safety assurance framework, and independent global AI safety research. To enhance oversight, the scientists suggest the establishment of national AI safety authorities responsible for monitoring and registering AI systems, particularly identifying red flags like self-replication and intentional deception capabilities. This call for action follows the International Dialogue on AI Safety, held in Venice in early September where scientists discussed coordinated international responses to these pressing safety concerns. During the Venice meeting, Professor Gillian Hadfield from Johns Hopkins University raised alarms about the absence of a response framework in the event of an AI-related catastrophe. Earlier this month, the US, EU, and UK took a step forward by signing the first legally binding international AI treaty, focusing on human rights and accountability in AI regulation. The scientists propose treating AI as a global public good, advocating for ethical norms akin to those established in medicine and law. This has been your Daily Brief in Science. To read more about these stories, follow the links in the episode bio. You can also subscribe to these updates via email at www.brief.news. For more daily podcasts about the topics you love, visit brief.news forward slash podcasts. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be back with everything you need to know.